Amen. It's nothing like getting in the house. It's nothing like getting into the house of the Lord and and give him worship. We're in the we're in the dying age right now. A lot of people are being tricked, bamboozled, bushwhacked, and things that of a false reality. Things that we once thought that was true, but really isn't. There's a lot of uh, falsehood going around in our nation and in the, in the world today. And today I'm just going to do a little bit of exposure of it. Because we need to know and you heard this from pastor all the time, but we all know that it comes from Satan and his kingdom. And, but he has pupils that work for him and do his bidding because he offers them promises of fortunes and riches and everything that is only temporary. Well, we're supposed to be in the eternal state of mind. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's... Move forward, and let's start at Revelation 12, verse 9. Hallelujah. Now, let's start at 7. Let's just start from the way we begin that. <laughs> Hallelujah. And... It says here, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. And they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. That means everybody. One, every one of us been deceived. And he did a good job on us, didn't he? he did, and then when you woke up and you, and you found out how you got deceived, you said, oh, man. <laughs> when you're waking up, you're like, oh, man. You mean I was doing that? Oh, my gosh. Boy, I'm surprised you didn't kill me. Thank you. Think about it. When you can wake, really wake up and see what really you came out of, it was, you should be in a shocked state of mind when you was in the things you did and be grateful for the things that he allowed you to get out of. Amen? It says here, he was cast to the earth and the angels was cast out with him. Now, the devil rules by deception that rules the earth. So everything that's of the world is backed by deception. Amen. Everything. Except for the things that are in Christ. Because there's no in-between. Either it's Satan or it's God's. Amen. So everything else that is not of God is a deception that's behind it. That will, if you don't be careful, it can draw you away from God. Because we can idolize things when we come in love into them. We can idolize them. So deception always get in the way of reality. It always get in the way of reality. Because it don't want you to see what is real. Satan has many strategies, schemes, and devices to deceive us. Many. You know, the word says that he's the most cunningest beast. That means he's very cunning and crafty. He watched us since we was born. And he watched how we, what, what we liked and what we didn't like, what made us angry and what didn't make us angry. And he waits for the opportune times to push buttons. And not only that, he hides behind our inheritance, our family members that was born before us that he brought down a family line of curses that we don't even know of. 
That's come when the things that you know of, don't know of, that's where Satan hides at. And he uses it against you. Amen? Amen? Let's go to 1 John. Oh, the, the title of this teaching would be Satan Make Believe World. First John 2, 15. We all know this scripture. We, how many times have we said it in our sleep? <laughs> Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. This is what Satan tempted Jesus with. He tried to tempt him with the riches of the world. He tried to tempt him with the, the lust of, of the world. He tried to tempt him with everything else. Now, if he had done that to Jesus, how much more? Is he going to try to do it to us? You know, it says, uh, Jesus, this is what Satan tempted Jesus with. He tries to come in the backside. So, you know, as you're watching him and, and you wear him here, you try to get slick and come the back door. You ever had something that come behind you and snuck up behind you and you said, man, how did that happen? And it's a surprise to you. Because you didn't know, that's how he comes. He does things like that. He does trickery. He's very tricky. He likes to be, like play magicians on us, disappear on us. You know, the demons come in and out of, the, out of this realm. You know that. And they play games and everything else. They, and if you're not, if you've got an open door, they know about it. And that's when we have to re stay in repentance. Even when you're doing wrong, you get and repent, and you ask God to take it away from you. Because a lot of times you can't take it away from you. You got to make that choice. You got to make that effort. And as you make that effort, then he'll come and dwell and help you and show you. And you know, you hear that voice saying, uh-uh, don't do that. How many times we hear that voice? Don't say that. <laughs> and you say, forget that. I got to say what I got to say. <laughs> you want to hear what I got to say, brother. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a piece of my mind. <laughs> yeah, whose mind was it really? <laughs> whose mind really was it as you was in that place of rage or anger or bitterness? Who was really speaking out of the resources that came from him? Amen. But he was only using your body to use to bring damage to an individual. And as you bring damage to the individual, it comes back into your ears and bring damage to you. So he wins two times. He does it twice. Because he's capturing one while you're releasing it, but he's damaged harm to the other one as he's hardened the heart. Amen. Amen? Jesus wants us to separate. Jesus wants us to separate unto him. Human nature is filled with vanity, jealousy, greed, and lust. Satan can take advantage of that tendency and weakness in all of us. He sends temptations through the media, television, magazines, and the internet, and through carnal and covetous and individuals. That's how he does it. He manipulates our minds. As we were watching TV when we were young, we didn't even know that certain things that we were watching, we were being programmed. We were being programmed into the system and not even realizing it. And it was just called entertainment. I remember when I was a kid, we used to watch, my parents didn't know better, we used to watch Bewitch. I dream of Jeannie. 
all those shows. They was, they was cool. You know, you see her, with her nose and all that. Cute stuff. <laughs> you know? We, we really was watching the family of demons, the monsters and the Adams families and everything else that the, the media had to offer to us when we was young. And we grew up in that culture of make-believe. And we believed in those things. And we tried those things and we played with those things. As kids, you know, with kids, you play games. And you maybe what you see. Amen? Amen? All right, let's move on. Let's go to James 4. Satan makes believe world. So as we become adults, as you don't come mature, you're still in that grown body acting like a child. If you don't mature in Christ, you'll still be, because Satan knows when and time to use it. And he'll wait for the opportune time, he said. And you know, he's very subtle. He don't let you know that he's there. But he'll build it gradually. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. James 4, verse 1. Am I right? Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Sorry. Where do wars and fights come from among us, from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in, the, in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scriptures say in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, your sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Now, do we let pride and vanity guide your thinking? Think about that. Do we let pride and vanity guide our thinking? There, has there been times when you allow pride to come and creep in in a situation? And then you, and when it gets there, you can't stop it. It's like a force. It's like a full force and it just takes over. And you, you know you're doing wrong, but you you like forget it. You like lay it down your sword and everything. All right, I got it. And, and, but this is how the enemy does it. He has strategies. He knows how to do things to us because he knows our nature. He's been watching us since the beginning. He knows where we're weak at and where we're strong at. And sometimes he'll use your strength to make you fall. And sometimes he'll use your weaknesses to make you fall. That's how come we have to have that relationship with the, the Holy Spirit it lead us to all truth so that we don't get swayed by the things of the enemy. Because he's very cunning. It says, and giving you, and if so, you can be deceived. We must submit to God in all things and humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. But you got to understand, even though the pastor's not around, we still got to stay humble. Because pastor can't get us to heaven. He can guide us towards heaven. But we all have to stand before the holy master and ask, the, are we coming in? Because the word says that the road is wide and many are going to go into it. The world is going to go into it. But to get home is narrow and difficult. And many will not choose to go that narrow path because it's difficult. And they don't want to go through what God is asking them to do 
to get there. You know, because our flesh sometimes we don't want to submit to the things of God because it's hard. But the word says that we're supposed to love those things. Because we know if we love those things, we're pleasing our Father. And it's keeping us separated from the enemy. And the enemy won't have access to come and enter in. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, I'm not teaching this all to you. You know, this is for me, too. This is for me, too. You know, I was getting, uh, I got a black eye when I got done with this teaching. Because <laughs> you got to understand something. We all fall short to the glory of God. We all fall short. And when we fall short that, we don't sometimes want to admit it. Especially to others. But the Lord says to be open so you can be free. This way the enemy don't have access. Amen? Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, verse 14. It's just a chapter going the other way. Now, Hebrews 12, 14 says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, looking what? Carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springs up, cause trouble. And by this, many become defiled. If we are not careful to watch our feelings, we can become bitter. Maybe someone offended us. Then the hurt feeling comes into a grudge. Then, the start, then we start thinking about revenge. I remember many times when I was in the world, that, that was, that's how my process was. My process in the world and the way that Satan had my thinking, oh yeah, I'll get you back. You wait, the time's coming. Uh-huh. Oh, wait, hey, remember in school? <laughs> wait after school. <laughs> Everybody running around, there's a big fight going on! <laughs> you wait after school. Uh-huh, yeah, uh -huh. you talk about my mama? I got you. <laughs> uh, you looked at my girlfriend wrong. Or you stepped on my foot. All kinds of stuff the devil would use because he knew that we were in the flesh. It was easy to get us arrived up. All someone had to do was say one word and boom. Don't, was, and people will warn you, man, don't talk to that person, man. Don't start with that person, man. You're going to have this whole place going crazy. And the person going to try that person there. I told you not to touch that person. <laughs> person full of demons. Got full of rage. Inherited from inherited curses that came down the family line. Haven't been dealt with. While we work around with probably addictions and uh, perversion and everything else that was going on in our lives. There was something that he left behind in all of us that we had to deal with. And, and the only way you can deal with it is through Christ. That's the only way we can get free. It's through Jesus. And to separate ourselves from this world. Because if we stay in this worldly system and follow the worldly system, we're going to have a deceptive mind and thoughts. And our behavior is going to follow behind it because our fruits are going to stink. Amen? If such feelings are nursed and encouraged, then they can turn to hate and bitterness. That's what can happen. Let's move on to Matthew 5. Let's 
Is everybody okay? Amen. Amen. We know that Pastor is in um, Buffalo, and he's getting people set free up there. And he's teaching them the same things that we were, were taught down here. And we get a lot of good teachings in this place. I remember when I first came to Total Freedom and they said, you got to teach. I almost had a fit. Because I said, you mean I got to stand in front of people and talk? I'm not used to that. I wasn't used to that. I was very, you know, I did my dirt and everything, but when it came to God stuff, I don't know how to talk to the names of God. Didn't. And at times now when I got to teach, you should see me. I'm like, I got to teach? Okay, I'll take it, but, you know, I'm accountable for what I teach. I'm very accountable. And then, you know, after you teach, you'll be tested. Because the enemy is going to come like a roaring lion. Because he hates to be exposed. Hates to be exposed. Because somebody somewhere, somewhere in this place is going to get free today of something that was said today because the anointing is back, backs up his word. Amen? Amen? It's for those who believe, right? Amen? Matthew 5, verse 43. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That's the answer. Prayer. We must have a prayer life. Without prayer, we can't overcome our enemies. Without prayer, we can't see people getting rescued and saved. Without prayer, we can't see things turn around within ourselves. You got to understand something. You can't change people. But your character and what you do might change them by what they see in you. Because talk is cheap. There's people that can talk the word violently, I mean, very good, and, and talk it real nice, and, and you're like, oh, but then you see what they're doing. You're like that when you match up to what the words that they're speaking. Because talk is cheap. Only by the anointing, when the word goes forth, it can break the yoke of bondage. So it has to be anointed. Because words just fall, but the anointing stands because it's backed by truth. See, the devil can speak these things too. But, but what's behind it when he speaks it is deception. Because he used the word of God for his advantage, not for God getting the glory. Let's go to verse 45. It says, that you may be sons of your father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and send rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do, you not, do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren, only what do you do more than others do not even the tax collector do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Such bitterness can lead to, when you have bitterness in your heart, it can lead to unparable sin. Because it can bring to a place of sin that if you die in it, you won't be able to make it to heaven. Because Unforgiveness keeps you from getting into heaven. You know, the Lord's Prayer says, Father, forgive me as I forgive my debtors. So as you forgive your debtors, you'll be forgiven. That's the only way it works. 
The kingdom of God is not like what you see in the movies. <laughs> in the movies, it's also, it shows revenge. It shows that somebody got hurt and they say, okay, we're going to go get these people and da, 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 da. And you see an adventure, a thriller. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> and at the end, the reward is done. <laughs> but this is what the worldly system shows us. It's not the way of the kingdom of God is made for us. That's when we can't fall in love with the things of the world. You know, Scarface and all the other things. I mean, I go to the barber shop, you see all these pictures of Scarface. And that's their, they idolize that stuff. And as my eyes have opened up, I see those things as shame now. Because at one time, I idolized it. But now I, it's not mine no more. You can have that, brother. That's not mine. I don't affiliate with that stuff no more. What you mean? They see now they can't understand why. What you mean you don't affiliate with that? You mean everybody in the world is supposed to be loving this stuff. But I'm not of the world. I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. I'm just passing through, trying to get home. I'm trying to get to where I belong at. I don't want to stay in this corrupted, corrupted organization of this Defile, stinky world system. I want to be where my father's at, where I can be free and run like a little kid again and be free and jump up and down, walk through walls and all kinds of good things that he has waiting for us. <laughs> We're looking at each other, and sometimes you don't even have to speak. You just look and you're in the same mindset. Let's go. <laughs> cool stuff, you know? We do that now. We do that now. As you're in Christ, you're in like-mindedness. You know, as you think you're somebody already doing it. That's like-mindedness. You know? We're thinking of the same mind, thinking about the same purpose and the same goal. To please our Father. Now, you got to understand something. Satan kingdom, they will do their best to serve Satan. They will do all the rituals, everything that's according to what they need to do to serve their master. And they don't love each other. It's hate there. But they still have a purpose to fulfill. And they will do it to expertise. To please. Think about it. All the things that the organizations and everything else they have, they got rules and guidelines, rules and guidelines, rules and guidelines, and they stick to it. The ones that are real about it. And they come after our souls as we're trying to save theirs. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 3. We're going to talk about that. Verse 7, Hebrews 3, verse 7. There's so much to talk about in this teaching that it would take me a long, a couple of weeks to, because Satan has so many things in, that's going on in this world. And it takes, I mean, all you got to do is go back into uh, uh, our library, Eternal Library, and Pastor got many teachings that exposes these things. And there's more. There's always more that, we, that God is revealing, bringing to light of the darkness. There's always more that's being revealed so that we can see. Now, once we see it, we just don't stand there and go, oh. We do something about it as we're sent forth to do it. But we prepare ourselves that when we're sent, that we're ready to go. Amen. Therefore, verse 7, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the day in rebellion, in the day of trials in the wilderness, 
where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my work forty years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, They always go astray in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called the today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. That's coming it's so important for us to have fellowship. It's very important for us to have fellowship because fellowship keeps us in place and accountable. Amen? Amen? For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts in the, in the rebellion. For who having heard rebelled indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses, now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness, and to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who would not obey? Lack of faith opened us to satanic Deceptions, lack of faith. The faithlessness of the Israelites who lacked faith and trust and trust in God, we need to learn from the hardness of their hearts and avoid it in our own lives. It, 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 and, you know, it shows more not only just in about Moses and the Israelites talks about it in, with David when he got in, no, I'm sorry, not David, Saul, when he got himself, when he was trying to please the people instead of pleasing God, and he, he missed out. And, 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 and it shows in the Bible many characters that has happened to, and God showed these things for us so that we could learn from these people what had ha happened to them so that we can avoid it to happen to us. Amen? Amen. But, we have to, but we have to cooperate with that. We have to cooperate with him. He's trying to show us, but we have to cooperate so we can not do it. <laughs> Amen. Amen? God's always speaking, though. He's speaking in our today language. You know? He's not saying, thus thou's and these no more. He, he's saying, yo, man. You know what you need to do? <laughs> He's speaking how you can understand it. Amen. You know, he might speak to you one way and speak to me another way. He created me and he knows how to talk to me. Amen. And he knows how to talk to each and every one of us. He knows how to get our attention when we need to get it. Amen? Amen? Second Thessalonians 2. Verse 2 Second Thessalonians 2, verse 3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called of God, or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know that it's restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mysteries of lawlessness is already at work. We can see that today, can't we? We can see that today. There's lawlessness going on all vapidly all over this nation. Not only here, the world is vampy running rapid. You got to remember Satan's no, he has a short time left, and he is busy doing what he needs to do. I think he's moving faster now than he ever has, because you got to understand something. He's not only after the, the ones that's in the world, he's after the seeds. He's trying to kill the seeds that's coming forth. He's, that's how come he's, he's 
allowing abortions to come through so he can destroy the seeds. He's destroying it, destroying humanity, trying to kill humanity because he do not like us. Because every time he sees us, guess who he sees? Our Father. Our Father. A lot of people don't know that. They're caught up in false identity. But our true identity is to look like our Father anyhow, in the character of him anyhow. Because that's the reflection of who he really is. Amen? Amen? So verse 7 says, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, and he now restrains, will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of the mouth and destroy with the brightness of the coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the, what? Truth. Truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them, what? Strong delusions, that they should believe the lie, not believe the truth, but had pleasures in unrighteousness. Huh. People are living in a wonderland, a fantasy. You, you go and talk to people today that's in the world, and you just look at them and say, man, he looked like a cartoon character. Because he took what was fantasy and made it into his lifestyle and living it. Homosexuality. It's a fantasy. They, the, man, the bad thing about it is they're trying to pervert our children and bring it into the school systems and bringing these drag queens into the school system and teach them perversion. Amen. It's in our school system. Do you remember when we was in school when, when they was trying to teach us that we were supposed to be apes? Amen. That's perversion. They brought all this stuff in the system, and the system is run by the government. And the government is run by Satan's kingdom. And all the things that you once believed in history, some of your histories have been lied to you, been altered. And you can't believe everything. You have to search those things out for yourself to find out truth. But you got to understand something. We're not supposed to be concerned about these worldly things anyhow. Because once we become born again, you're supposed to be concerned about getting people to a born state of mind to get free from this worldly system. Because there's nothing but lies and deception in this worldly system. And the deeper the rabbit hole goes, the more you find out. Amen? Amen. People are living in a wonderland, a fantasy world, thinking that it is real, but it's false. But they make it real Walking in strong delusions. Caught up in the things. We want to get to it. Let's go Second Peter. Huh. Hallelujah. Let's go to Second Peter one. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring destruction heresies, even denying the Lord who brought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destruction ways, because of whom they, the way of truth will be blasphemed. Yeah, I'm at Second Peter 2, verse 1. Yes, 2 Peter 2, verse 1. Is everybody there? We are now. All right. Did I say that the first time? No. What I said, 2 Peter 1? I apologize. Just like my dad. 
All right, y'all, y'all with it now? Okay, let's do this. <laughs> Second Peter two one. But there will also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring destruction heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. So they're going to blaspheme truth. They're going to take the truth that is supposed to be true. And I'm going to let you know something. A lot of these people that do these things once were believers. They got offended by the church and turned around and caused another religion and bring destruction to people because of their hurt and their bitterness. Verse 3, and Satan said, well, I, you know what? Satan will come and visit them and say, well, I'll offer you the world. I'll give you all this stuff. If you just do this for me, I got great rewards for you. I'll give you the treasures of the world. I'll give you fame and fortune. A lot of people just want fame, that 15-second fame. They'll sell their soul for that. Just for everybody in the world to see them. They're not, and you got to understand something. A lot of the people that you think it has money, they don't. They just got fame. They sold their soul for it. Verse 3. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle. And their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of the eight people, and preached a righteous bringing in the flood of the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly and delivered righteous Lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For the, that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Let me let, let you know something. How do we feel today when we look around this world today? Does it upset you? The things that you see? It dampers you? And you say, Lord, you see all this stuff. It, it, it dampens your spirit. And you have to get, get and, and, and pray. Because you, you're seeing things that's defiled, tormented. People are, are being harmed. And, you know, people laugh when they harm people now. They think it's funny. You, you look at these little kids that's watching video games and everything. And they're shooting up schools and everything. They think it's fun. They don't even see the repercussion of what's going on behind them. They say, something told me that. Yeah, a demon told you that. And a lot of them know this, they're full of demons. Because they're playing with demon toys. Playing with witchcraft and black magic and sorcery. Being bewitched by the... The things of watching on television and movies and alternate their thinking, listening to the ungodly music. You know, I remember the ungodly music I used to listen to. It was bad. Led Zeppelin and all the rest of the game. You know, I used to listen to all that stuff and the Funkadelics and all that other stuff. It was witchcraft and black magic. Yes, it was bad. But today, they have the children telling them, Come on. They sold their soul, right? They tell them, come on to hell. Come on, you're going to have fun there. Come on. They're entertaining hell in front of them, and they're dumb-minded it because of what they're taught in the school system that they believe it. This is very serious. It's happening to our children. It's happening to our youth. You know, one thing Hitler did say, he said, if you get the youth, you can, you can get the nation. Because it's, a, it's the generation that's coming up. 
And you got to understand, we getting older, and you get a whole bunch of youth around you, they get violent. They get rowdy. And they're a little stronger than we are. <laughs> yeah. And they have and they have immature minds. So they don't think about their tomorrows like we do. That's deception. That's how Satan alters the plan. Let's move on. Then the Lord knows, verse 9. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and reserve the unjust under punishment from the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh and the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. Hmm. They are presumption self-willed. Whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviving accusation against them before the Lord. But these, like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of things that do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruptions, and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spot and blemishes carousing in their own deception while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and they cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetousness, practices, and are accursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam and the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but he was rebuked for his iniquity, a dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice, restrained and madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds carried by the tempest, for whom is reserved the back, blackness and darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they lure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, and one who have actual escape from those who live in error. Live in error. So, the things that they promote now, try to make good evil and evil good. That's what they are promoting now. So you being a good person, oh man, you're not supposed to be good no more. It's do that art thy will. That's the whole thing of today. Do what you feel like doing, man. You ain't got to follow no rules. You're your own man or your own woman. Sometimes you got to look real closely because you don't know what it is no more. It has come to the place that they don't even come by identifying who they are no more. They're a mixed breed of, I'm not a man or a woman. But if you go to the hospital, they have to find out, is this a male or a female by get, taking blood samples and everything because they have to find out what they need. So despite all the fantasy world that they're in, they're still what God made them to be. So that's plain deception. It's foolishness. And that's what Satan plays with foolishness. The world has their own set of religions. They are trying to do, they're trying to indoctrinate this generation through the school systems, television, movies, music. The world believes in do what thy will. They believe Satan is God and he will redeem the world. They have a, 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 a little thing that they use in, in videos, in music videos, and it's, a, it's supposed to be the tree of life. And they have a serpent around it, and they worship the snake. And they have the videos out for the children. Because the children mostly watch this stuff more than we do. Well, we got adults that watch it now because they want to be children. 
Yeah, you have ever since seen somebody 60, 70 years old acting like a 14 year old? Yeah. Deceived. Deceived. And you got to understand something. Now they got, I, I've seen this, this, this thing, because I, I research stuff, and it says, uh, God, girls rule the world. They made the girl look like she's God. See, he knows about that. He's young, he knows. And they, and they use the feminists, because you gotta understand, Satan wants to turn everything upside down and change the order of what God created. And he brings deception in many ways. People are so dumbed down it now that they can't see it. You got believers going to Beyonce concerts, and they're supposed to be believers, don't know that they're looking at a Satanist, a, a witch, and worshiping her. Want to be like her. Stuff like that. And they're supposed to be believers. So, so really, you have to be careful when you talk to a Christian because you don't even know if they were for you or against you. So, so come God gave us discernment to know the difference. When they speak, if it don't match up to God's word, you'll recognize it. Whoa, wait a second. That didn't sound right. <laughs> oh, no. That's, did, did, did you hear what came out your mouth? <laughs> and they believe it to heart. And they will go hell, go to hell with it, be believing it, because some, somebody that they were being taught by taught them wrong. You got, like, Gnosticism going on. Kabbalah. And Kabbalah, they, Kabbalah comes from India, and they brought this stuff into America through the Beatles, Rolling Stones, back in the 60s. You know, they bring in the, the 60s back to all those false gods worship that they used to do. They're bringing it back. I go into homes when we go out to work and everything, and I, I, will, I, I will walk in the house, normal person, looking all like they're a normal person, but I see the stuff that they got in the house, and I see these, these, these objects, and I see Kabbalah over here, and I see a witch over here, I see Dreamcast over here, and they say, yes, and Jesus loves you too. What Jesus do you serve? You got a different Jesus than the Jesus I serve. Because my Jesus would told you to get that junk out of here. And repent. It's, it's going on, y'all. Rapidly. Rapidly. You know, they got, they got masons and, and fraternities. See, if Satan has his order how he does it with the, with the college kids, he put them in the fraternity in colleges. And then when they complete from there, then he put them in the masonry. And then and they put them in masonry, and then they, then they got to understand something. There's a lot of things that goes on behind the closed doors that we don't know of. And high places, and, and they got the Illuminati or, or masons. We got presidents that were masons. We got businesses that are masons. And they have to do blood sacrifices to become power. The higher up ones do. See, the ones on the low, they don't know all that stuff. And if they do, they're so deceived that they don't want to let go because they believe in the lie instead of believing in the truth. Amen? See, people want Jesus to save them, but don't want him to be Lord over their, over their lives and obey him. But they want him to save them. And a lot of people don't want Jesus. They want the, the devil. Outrightly. Man, there's, there's people on this earth that the demons are taking their bodies and reforming their bodies as they're on earth today. And they're having hoofs being made on their bodies. And, and they're putting, they're, they're forming their heads with horns on it and defiling their body to and look like Satan or the demon that's inside of them. Because you got to remember, a demon was a, didn't have a body. Now they, they're looking for a body to be in, so now they're transferring the body into what they're looking like. Amen? Amen. Everybody okay? 
I look like me, like I'm crazy. I am. <laughs> Isaiah 5, verse 20. What's the name of this teaching? Satan's make up world. Satan's going to make you, you know, if you follow Satan, Satan will make you look crazy. You ever seen, I'm, you ever seen somebody crazy? Amen. Huh? They have, you know what that was? A person full of demons. You, you, you ever listen to the music sometime when, when the songs that you were singing and it, it didn't make no sense? And you sing these songs and you're speaking these words? Didn't know that you're speaking witchcraft? Because it makes no sense. But they knew what they were putting in the music. It make you speak those things so that you worship Satan. Deceptive world. Satan is not going... Wake you up every morning and tell you that, hi, I'm Satan. This is what I'm going to do to you. Like I said, he hides where you don't know. And then when you do know, you got to do something about it. I, the Lord reminded me this morning. You remember this time? Yeah. I, I went to, a song came in my, in, into me, Song of the World. You know, I just heard it. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. And I go to the store. The same song is playing in the store. How the, how all of the songs in the world, they playing the same song that I heard this morning. I said, I rebuke that Satan in the name of Jesus. Trying to wiggle through the back door. Because <laughs> those words, he just wanted me to what? Repeat them. Want me to sing it. Isaiah 5.20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and for sweet for bitter. And this is what's going on today. This is what's going on today. All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians 11. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Second Corinthians eleven, verse thirteen. Now we're going to talk about the things that's going on in the churches. You go. You got to understand something. This is stuff that you know, Satan. The stuff we talk about, you know Satan. You can see that in, in the darkness. That's darkness that's being exposed and, and they outright, outright just showing the thorn in your face. You know, the music and everything else is being thrown in your face. And they just throw it. And the more that you see it and you see it and you see it and you see it, it's like a lie. You just repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. You start believing it, believing it, believing it. Especially to the youth, they be like, oh, man. I want to be like that. And then they look at their parents. Their parents are not living godly. And then they look at around them because, you know, they look at, they have to see something to look up to. Didn't we all look at something to look up to? And most of it was a lie, wasn't it? And then we had to fight our way to get out of it. And some of us still are dealing with issues. That still is lingering around that we have to deal with until it go away. Like Paul said, Lord, can you take this thorn away from me? And God says, is my grace sufficient enough? <laughs> Just do my will, son. I escaped you from the, this destruction world. Just choose to fight for life, not for death. Amen. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13 says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. 
And no wonder, for Satan himself transferred himself into an angel of light. Satan is very mindful of the things of men. He knows just what appeals to people. And he uses this knowledge to tailor enticements to their individual weaknesses. For, he, for him to come among God's people as a roaring lion, what he does with the world, will be very appealing to them. But when he comes as an angel of light with pleasant, flattering words, and the smile on his face, then it's very difficult for believers. Do you hear what I said? When they come with a smile, and they, and they come with good swelling words, words that, you know, it, it, it touches you. I mean, it, it, you get goosebumps when you go to the, the churches, and they, and they speak oracles, and, and, and they can speak things that, but if you're not a believer, if you're not a firm believer and know the word of God, you can detect when there's something that ain't right. Because if Satan speaks to it, it's altered. Because you got to understand something. He has to get the glory out of it somehow. And yet, no matter what form he comes, and he presses mercilessly towards his one goal, which is to lead people into destruction. People serve Satan when they seek their own and when they go against the will of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's how we get to see when we start seeking our own and not heeding to the voice of the Holy Spirit, we can be tricked by deception teachings that are on. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to just say it. You got a lot of Tell TV evangelists that don't belong to be on TV. They wasn't called it. They just had money. And they, and they, I'm, and they're deceiving the masses. They're deceiving the masses. Because you see them and you think that they, they're speaking one thing. But if you look and check out the backgrounds, you'll find out most of them are Masons. Are affiliated in Masonry. And they got they got themselves in position to be exalted onto that platform. Gotta remember something. Satan's very cunning. He's in a we're in a Satan abiding world. Jesus just letting them lease the place. But he's got deception everywhere. You just have to be careful. And that's the come. I'm glad that God brought me to true ministry. Because truth is being set here. And a lot of times when you get mad about the truth, because it's truth. Amen. Because it hurts. Because it hurts, man. Truth hurts. Not a lot of people like the, like the pain of truth and the suffering of it. They'll run to a big church and hide out there where they can hide among the congregation. Just like Satan hide, came to the third heaven and, 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 and came to the first heaven with the angels and, and the angels didn't even know he was there. And Jesus said, Satan, what you doing here? He said, I'm to and fro going about my business, seeing who I may devour. So you got, you got to understand, Satan also bring, bring people to churches. And, and a lot of those big churches that you you fall in love with those people, they're doing blood sacrifices too in those churches. You gotta remember that if they're Mas if they're Mas Masonic uh, people, they gotta do the biddings. They gotta stay in power in, in their positions. I'm not saying all of them, but you have to find out which one there is. Because I'm gonna tell you something, there's people that come from Illuminati families that are exposing these things. They're telling people Look, I was in an Illuminati family, and my parents used to go to church and gather with the people, and we used to do sacrifices, and they used to use me. 
to do the sacrifices and have grown man and do all these other perverse things. Because if the teaching is perverse, it's going to be perverse things going on. Because it's not whole. Let's go to 1 Timothy. Now, Jesus tells us this in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Now, the Spirit expressly, that means he is urgently trying to tell you this, says that in the latter times, is these the latter times? Some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Jesus says they will be like wolves in sheep clothing and will not spare the flock, but will draw people away to destruction without God's gift of discernment. Our, and our love will be suckered into, stupi to, into stupidity. We will be suckered into stupidity because we didn't use discernment because they took the discernment away and, and just told you. I, I, I would say some names, but I'm not. I wanted to, but I'm not. But they're out there. They're out there. Big time. Let's go to Revelation 21. and say expose them. All right, this is the last one. Everybody okay? Amen. Anybody get something out of this? Amen. Anybody believe in some of this? Amen. How about anybody believe in a lot of this? Yeah. Anybody know that this is really happening? Do you know that this is the end times? Amen. Do you know that we got witches, warlock wizards um, coming after us, Amen. praying against us, trying to defile our, our youth, trying to destroy our families? Because Satan don't like families. He wants to destroy families. Because family is like, the, like God's family. We are a replica of what's in heaven, the family of God. He hates families. That's because he hates marriages. A man and a woman and the children. He hates that. Order. He wants to have the woman with a woman and the man with a man. Or a man with a beast. Or a man or a woman with a tree. That's how he wants to have the order. So anything that you be distracted on will keep you separated from the love of God. Amen. It's not what's outside the body that defiles you, but what is inside of you defiles the body. <coughs> Amen? So if you have a thirst and hunger for that stuff, then you need to get rid of it. And you got, I, I'm sorry, I have family members that have those spirits and, you know, I have to tell him all the time, you know, Jesus don't love you like that. He loves you, but he wants you. You wasn't made like that. I can't accept you like that because I know you for who you was. I know what he created you as. And that's what I believe. I believe him before whatever you're trying to deform yourself into. Amen? You have to do that. Because you got, we have to stand for righteousness. We have to have a standard. And not to falter and get weak. Not to get weak. But that's what he wants to do. He wants to weaken our senses. Because if he weakens our senses, then he allowed to bring junk into it. Amen? Revelation 21, verse 5. Then he sat on the throne, 
said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for those, these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give a fountain of water and life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolatries, and all liars shall have their own part of the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Those who lack faith in Christ and who persist in trust in Satan will utterly be destroyed. Thankfully, there is also good news for those who have faith and avoid Satan's deceptions. He who overcomes shall inherit all things and will be their God, and we shall be his sons and daughters. We must avoid self-deceptions because, you know, we are our worst enemy. We must avoid the world's deception. And we must avoid Satan's deceptions. We must dress up with the full armor of God and be prepared for battle. And stand close to God's presence and truth. And stay prayed up so that we can all get home. Remember, the world is wide, and many choose to go that way. But the road to get home is narrow and difficult, and few people choose to go that path. But it's available for all of us. We just have to make the choice to go through it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's prepare our, ourselves for communion, and those who have offerings can bring, them, bring the offering up.